first of all, the bodysuit itself is nothing special. It definitely feels off the rack. Hello, my beautiful life rights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 5, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And the category is Faster Pussycat Wig Wig, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a little pussycat wig. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have QDSM, and QDSM is a group made up of Morphin Love Dion, Sophia Cristal, Dawn, and Q. And they are coming out as a pop girl group that is definitely giving you Spice Girls, with each one giving a little bit of that different personality and a little bit of their own different color flair. First, we have Morphin Love Dion, who has chosen to go green. And she is glistening from head to toe in a full green sparkle, two-piece, like sort of bathing suit attire. Now, this is definitely a great performance outfit. It sparkles on stage, it's showing body, and it definitely feels like Morphine's personality. All in all, I feel that Morphine is the one who stands out the most out of this group. It's definitely put together, it's definitely giving you what it needs to give, and it feels like everybody's just trying to catch up to her. She looks good, this looks perfectly great for a performance attire, especially one that you don't have necessarily planned, so you kind of have to work with what you got. And she did that. Well, not only did she do it, she stood out doing it. And that is why for Morphine Love Dion, she's definitely getting a bag. And on the runway, Morphine Love Dion is coming out in this big black latex gown, and she's paired it with this red pussycat wig. Once you look closer, you start realizing that the gown is filled with uh, these stitch marks, really giving you that Catwoman vibe. She said, I'm gonna take this pussycat wig and give you a different type of cat. I'm giving you Catwoman. And I'm like, concept. We love a queen with a good concept. She's paired it with this little red pussycat doll wig. And on the wig, it's got full of rhinestones and it's in these like little sharp pieces. And it looks so stunning. I, at first, I didn't understand the wig itself, but I just loved it because it was done in a different way. But she turns her face and you see scratches on her face and you see scratches on her outfit. And then when she turns fully around, you see a giant scratch on her buttocks. And oh my God, this outfit is to die for pun intended. She looks ravishing, she looks great. And honestly, I love that she went in this direction. And this is a little bit of a different silhouette for Miss uh, Morphine Love Dion. All in all, she looks stunning and that is why she is getting a fab. Next up, we have Q, and Q's coming out in this sort of blue bikini paired with these blue sleeve pieces and these blue boot covers. She is definitely part of the girl group, giving you a different color and different silhouette. Now, the thing that surprises me is this is Q. I feel like this is very strange for Q, because Q is definitely one of those queens that's a little bit more put together, a little bit more uh, detailed, and I know that this is only a performance outfit, but this doesn't even feel like it came out of Q's wardrobe at all. So I'm wondering, did she borrow this from somebody? Did she make this in the workroom last minute to be part of the team? I definitely she think she felt that she made herself smaller and took a garment that doesn't necessarily shine just to be part of the group. So she was definitely a team player, but maybe a little bit to her detriment. The thing is, is that she probably could have gotten away with this outfit had she been better in the performance itself, but she wasn't great in the performance either. And it just made the garment that much worse. All in all, it was really missing a lot of the sparkle that Morphine and Sapphira had. It was missing all the details and luxury that we know Q to be. So this outfit was a little bit of a miss all around for me. And that is why she is definitely getting a drab. And on the runway, Q is serving a soldier from Camelot. She's coming out in this 
full silver attire paired with a sword and helmet. She takes off her diamond encrusted helmet to reveal her little pussycat wig. On top of it, she's got diamond blood dripping from her mouth like she just came out of battle and she slayed somebody. I love this look. First off, we're gonna talk about the outfit and the outfit is so smart. It's giving you warrior, but it's also giving you drag. It's giving you armor. It's giving you the story of this character that she's building, but it's also doing it in a sort of fashion way. On top of it, the one thing I also like is the way she interpreted a pussycat wig. Now, a pussycat wig sometimes can feel very flat, can feel very masculine, and you always have to think about how it's portrayed because obviously bigger, longer hair gives you more womanly. So sometimes you fall into this trope. But what she did is she gave you this helmet to kind of say, this is the moment, this is the helmet. And then I take off the helmet to reveal to this wig. This is a really good trick because when you do wear small wigs like that, it's because you have a hat on, it's because you have a helmet on, it's because you have something like that on. On top of it, the wig looks great. So it makes the wig look purposeful. If I had to change anything, I wish that her actual uh, pussycat wig had some little crystals in it or some little bit of silver just to bring you that fantasy from head to toe because the wig just feels like a wig. But all in all, she looks freaking stunning and I love it and that's why she's gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Saphira Cristal, and Saphira Cristal is coming out in this red sequence bodysuit with a little bit of fringe, and she's paired it with these red boots. She's also used this really big hair, and it's definitely giving you that Beyonce sort of, that like sort of old school Beyonce fantasy. She's definitely glistening, and she definitely matches the same aesthetic that Morphine was giving in the same girl group. So they definitely look like they belong together, which is really intelligent. But they're also giving their own personality. Safira is coming out in red, a different color, but is also coming in in a little bit more of a burlesque attire. But since they are all giving different personalities, like the Spice Girls, this kind of works and it definitely fits. Is it the most va va voom outfit? No. But this is a performance outfit based on whatever they have. It was, was not planned. So I think this was a really great outfit if this is what you have on your just like basic wardrobe. All in all, she looks good and that is why she's getting a Bob. And on the runway, Safira Cristal is coming out in this gray sort of power dress with these spiky breasts and this cape, and she's paired it with this white pussycat wig. Now, initially when I saw it, I thought to myself, this is the worst wig I have ever seen. It is so awful, and that is also comparing it to her outfit, which is so clean and so elegant and so sophisticated. I was so thrown off uh, initially because this is not Safira. Safira has always given us like really great drag. But as she walks down the runway, she reveals that this is not just a pussycat wig, but it is actually a pussycat. She pulls it off her hair to reveal that it is a cat and she is bald and she is now Dr. Evil. That's right, Dr. Evil from uh, Austin Powers. And then I'm like, concept, she did that. I thought the reveal was a little bit stupid, but when you have a theme like Pussycat Wig, you gotta do something, you gotta think of something. And she definitely took it to a different dimension. She definitely took it to a different idea. And I really appreciated that. It gave us concept um, and then it made sense altogether. The little cat looked good in her hand with her bald head and this power suit. She did give you that like, Dr. Evil, but make it drag fantasy. I loved it, even though it took me a while to understand it. Once I understood it, I freaking loved it. And that is why she's getting a fuck. And finally for group one, we have Dawn. And Dawn is being the pink fairy in this group. She's definitely got a different vibe, but Dawn has a different vibe. She's coming out in a little bit more of this velour outfit, a lot of the alien aesthetics into her, and a lot of ruffles. 
I don't know about this outfit. If I look at it individually, it's definitely giving me dawn. It's definitely giving me personality. But I just find that it doesn't really fit with the group. I'm okay with somebody standing out a little bit. You know, she could be the scary spice in the group. But I feel like at least the texture should have been the same. I wish she would have just done a little bit more sparkle on it. Like, if she kept the outfit exactly the same, but had it been a little bit more sparkly, it would have fit. Additionally, I feel like she could have lost the things coming out of her hair because everybody else was just doing like plain blonde hair. So this just added a, a lot to it. She definitely got the attention to her, either for good or for bad. As an outfit on its own, I think it's pretty good and it definitely gives Dawn's personality. As a piece in a group outfit, I feel like it's a little bit too stand out-ish and doesn't actually fit the vibe. You can see that she wanted to steal the attention a little bit. But again, we are going by what they had in their wardrobes and what to work with. So they probably had some limited options to go with. All in all, because this fits Dawn's personality and looks well constructed, I'm gonna have to give her a up. And on the runway, Dawn is serving us. Alien girl goes to the mall. She is painted herself from head to toe in blue, and she's got all of the mix and match patterns on her outfit. She's paired it with this bowl cut wig, giving you this, this old weird 70s alien brat doll uh, moment. Now, first things first, this is not a pussycat wig. I don't care how you're gonna say, oh, in the back, it's a got the pussycat moment. This is not a pussycat wig. I could have potentially forgiven her for the bowl cut to be like, hey, this is a little bit different. It is still like small flat hair. But then she decided to put this giant antenna on top of her head. And then I'm like, now you got hype. That defeats the whole purpose of a, like this short little pussycat wig. So that's where I was like, mm -mm, this is, this does not follow the theme. Now let's talk about the look. The look is actually really cool. It's definitely giving you Dawn's aesthetic with her mix and match patterns, with her alien vibes. And I like that she, you know, kept true to her identity. And the thing about Dawn is she does drag like nobody does drag. Like she can pull this off even though most queens can, but this is very much in her character. I just really wish that she would have paired this with a pussycat wig and that pussycat wig could have been in like some crazy color like neon green or something like that. Uh, and then it would have given you the same feeling while still following the theme. All in all, the outfit is cute. And like I say, if you're not gonna follow a theme and you better look good doing it. And Dawn looks good not following the theme. So even though I'm gonna falter a couple of marks for uh, the theme, she is still getting a fab. And the next group up is Lover Girls. And Lover Girls is made up of Plasma, A Mandatory Meeting, Plain Jane, and Tsunami Muse. Now let's get into these queens one at a time. First up, it is uh, Plasma starts the song with a bang. Not only does she sing great, but she looks great. She's got this black outfit with all of these beautiful cutouts all around it and a few rhinestones here and there. She's paired it with this pink wig to kind of already tell you the vibe of the, of the group, which is gonna be this black and pink fantasy. All in all, Plasma looks like the leader. She definitely looks like that bitch. And I think this is the best Plasma has looked. I love this look. It's giving you sexy, it's giving you pop star, and it's definitely giving you a vibe. I cannot believe that she had this in her wardrobe, just like sitting there, because this is better than some of the things she's been showing on some of the previous runway looks. All in all, Plasma looks fantastic, and that is why she's getting a bat. And on the runway, Plasma is coming out as the Greek messenger god Ares. She is coming out in this white and blue dress paired with these gold flying boots and these giant winged headpiece. First things first, I will say that Plasma was smart. She said, you know what? If I have to do this small, tiny hair that's not really giving you drag, then let me give you this giant headpiece. And she did just that with these wings on her ears. Now on the outfit itself, it is blue and white, kind of giving you that sky fantasy. And she's got the encrusted symbol of Aries on her chest. On top of it, uh, she paired it with these like uh, ostrich feather gloves, which 
kind of make it feel a little bit more bird-like, but also just makes it feel like light and airy like a god would. And on her feet, she's got winged shoes, very Jeremy Scott, but make it a little bit more gladiator with these tie-ups all the way to the top. All in all, I do like this look. I just was surprised that it's coming from Plasma. Plasma usually does a sort of like classic styling. And once you start looking at all the details, you start to realize some of the little tricks that Plasma has done. For example, her wings are headphones and she's got like these sort of platform style boots, which kind of give you this whole like Y2K fantasy, which is surprising coming from somebody like Plasma because Plasma is usually more of that classic 60s gal. Some people will say that they like the versatility she's showing. I personally like somebody who knows their drag and sticks to it and makes the theme fit their drag more. All in all though, I do like this look. I just wish she would have taken a little bit more of a classical approach to it lost the headphones for example and then maybe done like more of a traditional grecian style gown but all in all the vibe is there the look is there and i'm digging it and i can see a lot of people liking it and that is why she is definitely gonna get a uh. next up it's a mandatory meeting and a mandatory meeting for her performance attire is coming up in this pink and black bodysuit and it, this bodysuit is detailed like I always say if you're gonna do a bodysuit it better be the best freaking bodysuit especially if you're on drag race and this one is actually really good it doesn't got all the cutouts it's got all the interesting shapes and it's definitely giving you body oddy oddy now my best guess is that she had this potentially made for a Lady Gaga outfit that she probably does because it's definitely giving you a little bit of that rain on me fantasy and if you think about it that way then maybe it's not necessarily the best version of rain on me that I've seen but that is not what she's trying to serve she's just trying to give you pop star and pop star she is giving the one thing I will say is that I don't love the hair with it I wish she would have done something a little bit more something um, this just kind of felt a little bit flat comparative to the rest of the attire. All in all, she looks pretty good and it goes to show that with time, a mandatory meeting can look great because if this is something that she had in her wardrobe, then maybe she just needs to let loose and just like stick to her guns because this is like pretty up there, especially comparative to some of the runways she's had. All in all, on this one, I'm gonna have to go with a... Ah! And on the runway, a mandatory meeting is coming out in this brown twig-like dress with these three blue heads. And initially, I'm like, what is going on here? Why does she have a beard? I don't understand anything. And then Amanda goes on to explain that she is actually the tree with the nest, and these are the three eggs in the nest. And that the top of the head and, her, and the pussycat doll wig makes this cracked egg that she is coming out of. And initially I'm thinking like, oh, I, when she explained it, I'm like, oh, I get it now. And I like the concept. I love how Amanda thinks she's really intelligent queen, except for the fact that she definitely loses it in the execution. And this is what kills me every single time because I love Amanda. Now let's just talk about it. The dress itself, if you're supposed to be a tree, why are you giving us this dress? I would have loved it to be a head to toe brown look where her arms are the branches and her legs are the bark. And then it would have given you like more like this statue-esque moments. The actual headpiece of the twigs, kind of cool and kind of giving, you know? Then we get onto the eggs themselves. I didn't understand that those were eggs. I did. I was like, why is she wearing a blue beard? And I was like, you're not a bearded queen. I don't get it. So it definitely needed more explanation. I wish that had she done this, she would have actually put two eggs instead of two heads in there to kind of get that, oh, she's the third egg. Or if she was gonna do this, then she should have done her whole face blue to match these two blue faces. And then it would have been a little bit more cohesive. All in all, like I say, I love this queen. She's really smart. She got a lot of concept, but the execution isn't there. Personally, I would love to see a mandatory meeting on an all-star season because I do think she's all-stars material. She's just not serving this season or with this look. And that is why she's getting a drab from me.
Next up, it's Tsunami Muse, and Tsunami Muse for her performance attire is coming out in these black pants and these pink top. She's paired it with these black gloves and sort of natural hair. Now, all in all, I will say that Tsunami was like, you know what, we need to do this black and pink fantasy. What do I have in my wardrobe? What can work for this girl group? And you know what, she kind of made it work. She's definitely giving you a different vibe. This definitely feels a little bit more fashion. It's definitely giving you photo shoot. It's giving you maybe like runway or or a red carpet, but like, you know, like not the expensive red carpets, but just like, you know, like the every, like a day carpet, that's it, you know? But it is not giving you performance. That's it. She does look good and it definitely fits with her team. And I think that that's really important when judges these performance attires because they're not going to be the put together attires like runways. They're just going to be like, what can you make do? And she did a pretty good job of making do. She definitely fits. She definitely doesn't stand out in a negative way. And, and that is why for Tsunami Music performance attire, I'm going to have to go with a <laughs> And on the runway, Tsunami Muse is coming out in this red bolero jacket, these black pants and white shirt with this little black pussycat wig. She's definitely giving you sort of that Matadorian fantasy and she's definitely serving a vibe. The way she's selling it on the runway is definitely giving you that sort of lesbian fantasy, saying like, hey, I'm too cool, I'm too hot for you. When I look at the actual outfit, the actual outfit is really cool. It's got a lot of sparkles, it's got a lot of drag. And when you are doing pants as a drag queen, sometimes it could feel very masculine, but I love that she said, you know what, this feels a little bit masculine, so let me lean in and give you like this butch lesbian way of expressing it. Now, the part that sort of loses me a little bit is that although she looks great, I feel like there's not enough attention put onto the wig. The outfit is so embellished, so encrusted, and it's definitely taken it to the next level. While the wig looks quite like simple in comparison, I wish she had done some like little clips or some stones in it, just to really make that outfit feel complete from top to bottom. But all in all, even though it's not my favorite and not how I would have necessarily sold it either, She's definitely got a vibe and she definitely looks good. And that is why for Tsunami Views, I'm gonna have to go with a bub. Next up, it's Plain Jane. And Plain Jane for her performance attire is coming out in this black bodysuit with this ruffle detailing in tulle, these ruffle gloves and these thigh high boots paired with this long ponytail. Now, first things I will say is I totally understand where Plain Jane is coming from. This outfit definitely looks expensive and well put together. The problem I have is that there's no pink in it. You, she's got a lot of this like red burgundy and maybe it, it's pink in real life, but it doesn't read the same shade of pink at Tsunami's shirt or Amanda's outfit or even Plasma's hair. It just feels like this is a different piece and you can really feel like she was trying to shove it together. On top of it, this piece is cool, but it's not the same energy that the other girls were giving. Now, I will say that uh, I feel like Plasma and um, Amanda fit together really well, and Tsunami was a little bit of an outlier, and Plain Jane is also a little bit of an outlier here. And that's why when all four of them together, it kind of feels a little bit disjointed. Then again, you've heard me say it a few times, this is probably stuff they've already have in their wardrobe, and if this is what she has in her wardrobe, it's really good. I wish she would have went with something else, to be honest, just to make it fit a little bit better. I just really need that, really that big pop of magenta pink. And that could have been done with hair, that could have been done with an accessory, that could have been done with something else. Does she look good? Yes. Would I love this outfit? Yes. Do I see it fitting for this challenge? No. And that is why I'm gonna have to go with a drab on this one. <laughs> And on the runway, Plain Jane is serving BDSM fantasy. She's coming out in this little blonde pussycat wig with this latex face skinny, this air mask, and the whole bimbo fantasy. The thing about this runway theme is it's really hard with a small wig to make an impression. So she said, you know what? I'm gonna lean into the bimbo that I am and to give you this whole concept. And she put so much onto the outfit that it kind of detracts from the wig. And I think that's actually needed when you have a tiny wig, you need the focus to go somewhere else. And she did that with this sort of contraption. It is super tight, it's giving you body, you understand immediately who she is, 
and it definitely giving you that mmm feeling, you know what I mean? Like that, ooh, what is going on? And I quite love it. I think that the only thing that I would have probably done just a little bit differently is that I wish there was some sort of reveal. And hear me out. Imagine she pulls out the wires and then just air and gas starts coming out of them and then she can kind of like move them around. That would have been so but even without that, the outfit looks so good. And one thing that I will say is all of this latex BDSM attire is expensive. Like it might look cheap, but it is not. I will say that she probably spent some good money on this outfit, let alone for it to hug her so perfectly and tailored the way it is. All in all, love the concept, love the execution, love the weirdness of it. And I love things that are weird. And that is why for Plain Jane, it is definitely a fab. And the final group is Thick and Stick, made up of Maya Iman LePage, Megami, Nymphia Wind, and Geneva Carr. And they are coming out in this sort of yellow and black fantasy. First up, we have Maya Iman LePage. And Maya Iman LePage is definitely giving you rap star, pop star fantasy. She's coming out in this sort of black encrusted outfit paired with this neon yellow hair. It definitely sparkles, it definitely gives you a vibe, and it is definitely looking good. She is definitely the standout of her group, and it feels like she understood the assignment. This is how I like to see my Iman LePage. You know, on the runways, she just hasn't been serving it for me, and I've always been wondering, like, what is up with this queen? Why is she bothering me? But when I see her like this, in her element, doing performance, looking like a pop star, this is where she comes alive, and I love seeing it. This outfit looks great from head to toe, and it is definitely a fab. And on the runway, Maya Iman LePage is coming out in this black latex dress with these pointy shoulders and tall thigh-high boots. She paired it with this black pussycat doll wig. Now, I will say that Maya Iman LePage was smart in saying that since I have the small hair, let me draw the attention somewhere else, and she gave you these big, pointy shoulders, which I love. One of the main problems I have with this outfit is that it doesn't have a concept. And because it doesn't have a concept, it just looks like a nice dress. And we are on season 16 of Drag Race, so everything needs to be bigger and better than ever. And I feel like this dress could have been seen almost on any season for a performance outfit, to be honest, not even a final runway. So I think that Maya could have really used a concept, an idea, a, a, a direction, because it definitely feels like a look, but what is it giving me? What is it inspiring? Like myself as a drag queen, I look to drag race to get inspired, to think of new things, to push my boundaries. And I feel like I probably have something like that in my wardrobe, you know what I mean? Or I, and that's kind of where I'm like, mm, for it. I've been giving Maya Iman a lot of passes so far, but looking at this outfit compared to all the other queens on the runway, I can't give her another pass again. And that is why she's gonna have to get a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Geneva Carr. And Geneva Carr for her performance attire is coming out in this like wannabe Versace outfit, or shall we say Versace? I will say that she understood the assignment in saying that, you know, we're gonna do black and yellow. I have this black and yellow gown. It works, it mixes all of the pieces together and it really does help her team come together, especially when one's all in yellow and the other one's all in black. But I will say that the problem I have with this outfit is just, it's not a very good outfit and it definitely doesn't fit the same vibe. She's coming out from a completely different field. She's coming out really left field and it's just like disjointed. And this is a common theme that we're seeing with this group. They just needed some little editing here and there that would have brought it together. I would have wished that had she done this outfit, I wish she would have paired it with like jet black hair as opposed to brown hair because nobody is giving brown and she could have definitely used a little bit more punch. On top of it, she's gone with her like her big traditional like Texas drag hair. I think that for a performance outfit like this, a little bit, something a little bit edgier, a little bit flatter, maybe slick black would have given her that more like punk vibe that, you know, that that Nymphia and Maya were giving. All in all, she just doesn't feel like she fits in and I don't like the, the outfit individually. And that is why for the performance outfit, for Geneva Carr, I'm gonna have to go with a drab. 
And on the runway, Geneva Carr is coming out as this 1920s flapper girl mixed with this 90s aesthetic cheetah print kaleidoscope of color. She's definitely taking two ideas and clashing them together. Now, I love the idea of a clash. I think this was an intelligent clash because when you get into these sort of 1920 silhouettes, we've seen them done so many times, and it's how do you do it new? On top of it, once you get to these dark colors on the runway, sometimes they just don't read. So having that jolt of crazy cheetah print in it really takes it into a different direction and really brings this freshness to it and really gives it a vibe. Now the question is, is it the vibe that you want to be giving? And I will say that maybe it is, but I feel like this might have been more better suited for somebody like Mirage than it would have been for Geneva Carr. I don't understand how this 90s cheetah print aesthetic fits her personality. I was looking for that Spanish influence that she's been giving us on every runway. And it just wasn't here this time. And then we get to the wig itself, which is the main point of this runway. Now, the good thing is that she was also smart and realized, I need hype, let me give you this feather on the side. The only problem I have is the feather is too small. So again, everything looks too small. I wish that feather was like four times bigger and just like really over the top to give you that moment. But, and also because of this bandana that the feather is sitting on, you don't see the wig. I wish that she had maybe done the wig in like a neon color to pull up those crazy colors onto her head so that you can at least see it. And then maybe added some like black rhinestones on it just to give you that extra little oomph that you need, you know what I mean? All in all, this was neither here nor there for me. It was nothing special. And even though it looks well constructed and well thought through, with the queens that are left and the looks that we're getting, it just isn't strong enough. And that is why for Geneva Carr, she is gonna get a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Megami. And Megami for her performance outfit is coming in in this black bodysuit paired with these knee-high black boots. And she's done a whole bunch of little yellow accessories in her earrings and things like that. Now, all in all, I will say that this was a different vibe. First of all, the bodysuit itself is nothing special. It definitely feels off the rack. On top of it, she tried to in, uh, add that little bit of yellow to match her teammates, but it's just not enough yellow. She's really from head to toe in black. On top of it, the yellow that she is giving is giving you like this like 50s fantasy as opposed to giving you like pop star. So I'm like, what is going on? I wish that she would have had a different bodysuit that had a little bit more sparkles to maybe, you know, match up to what Maya was giving. But let's say she didn't have that in her outfit, then I wish some of the other girls, aka Nymphia, would have given her some yellow elements to really help her come together. Now imagine if she had Nymphia's yellow hair or and maybe a yellow boot. I think that this would have just really helped everything come together, especially since Nymphia was wearing way too much yellow as it is and could have used some black. They could have switched those boots and switched those hairs between the two of them and then they both would have been excellent. But I feel like they really let Megami down here by making her wear the plainest, most boring outfit. She is lucky that she was pretty good in the performance uh, and she was safe because this could have gone so many ways. All in all, for this performance outfit of Megami, I'm gonna have to go with a drab. And on the runway, Megami is coming out as this pixie fairy fantasy. She's coming out with this like see-through tulle dress this purple pussycat wig and these sort of feathers. For those of you who do not know, a pussycat wig can sometimes be called a pixie cut. So she decided to take it into that direction and go with this pixie fantasy. Pixie sometimes also refers to as a fairy. So I think that it was smart. She was intelligent. She's like, you know what? Pussycat wig, everyone's gonna go into the cat direction. And so let me go into this other fairy direction. And I think that that was so intelligent. And she's definitely giving you this sort of like grunge fairy, like I just came back from the club after doing a whole bunch of drugs on an all night bender and I'm a little bit sloppy. Conceptually, I really love it. I also like these colors with these teal and this purple and it's definitely giving you that ethereal vibe. Now, the one thing I will say is that I wish she had made her wings three times bigger to really give you that fairy fantasy so people can sort of understand, to really understand that she was a pixie and maybe thrown some like 
you know, glitter as she's walking down the runway. I think that just would have taken it up a notch. I also feel like she has to edit her outfit a little bit. For example, this necklace just doesn't match. I wish it was something else. Same thing goes for the bracelet. I feel like if she was going into this fairy, she should have really went more, you know, diamondy and, and crystal-y and a little bit more fairy-like. She's right now she's got pearls and I don't really get it. That being said, I think that she's definitely giving you a vibe and she's definitely taking it into a different direction. And I like how Megami's mind works. All in all, with a few adjustments, I think it's actually really cool and maybe I'm delusional, but I like it. I feel like I could rock something like this, even though I never do pastels. And that makes me inspired. And that's what I'm looking for. And that is why for Miss Megami, I'm gonna have to go with a soft fab. <laughs> Next up is Nymphia Wind. Nymphia Wind is coming in in this head to toe yellow. She always said that she is the queen that loves yellow and she puts yellow in a lot of her outfits. So I do feel like the queens kind of rallied around her and made yellow part of their ensemble. And you do see that here and there. Now I will say that they cater to her so she should have been looking the best and the best she does not. I feel like Maya Iman LePage took it from her on the performance attire specifically. That being said, I also feel like she wasn't really part of the team because she's in full head to toe yellow. I wish she would have paired this with black hair just to have that little correlation to every single person because she's missing that little bit of black. As an outfit as itself though, with the top, skirt, long hair, and these big poofy boots, it's definitely giving you pop star fantasy. And for that, for those reasons, I can't really fault her. Would I have I liked her to match better to her teammates? Absolutely. Is this gonna is it gonna be enough for me to give her a drab? No, she's definitely gonna get a bow. And on the runway, Nymphie is coming out on this traditional red Taiwanese attire. She's paired it with these sort of like boa things on her arms and this giant hat. Now I'm assuming that this is traditional Taiwanese because she is from Taiwan, though I do not know my cultural references. So it could be a different culture and if it is, I apologize. But back to the outfit. The outfit itself, she comes out and she's wearing a hat and you can clearly see that her hair is really tall. And I'm like, girl, that is not the theme. The theme is pussycat wig. What is going on here? She takes off her hat only to reveal that her whole head is a giant cat, giving you pussycat wig. And I'm like, intelligent. Now, I think it would have been more intelligent had we not seen this done earlier by Miss Safira, but sculpturally and everything, this one fits a lot better together in terms of aesthetics. But we are not done. She goes, you know what? I'm gonna give you, although this is a fun pussycat wig, I'm gonna take off this cat and I'm gonna give you the traditional pussycat wig. But not only any traditional pussycat wig, one that is filled with diamonds encrusted in all of the stones. And honey, this is how you do a pussycat wig. This is how I would have done it. You really gotta take it to the next level and make it special. And when she takes it off, I love this outfit because this outfit works with the cat on her head and the red uh, little wig on her head. And you can see that this girl is thinking and I love every moment of it. But she's not done yet. As she walks away, she takes off her little pussycat doll wig to reveal a vulva on the back of her head with just a little hair on top of it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, it took me a minute to figure out what, what, what was going on, but she was like, I'm gonna take Pussycat and I'm just gonna give you the first part of that, which I'm not gonna say on YouTube, but it's definitely giving you female genitalia fantasy and making it a little bit more phallic. I'm not used to seeing Nymphia with no hair, so it threw me off at first and I was like, what is she doing? But I think it's also super intelligent and super like off the wall, which is, who Nymphia is. She's a little bit kooky. She's a little bit off the wall. All in all, I don't think she needed the third reveal, but why not? It, it, it didn't take away from the outfit. And that's the most important part. All in all, Nymphia nailed it and she is definitely getting a bump. And that is it for this week's episodes. You guys asked for longer episodes, so I am giving you longer episodes. Now, Enough about me, let's get into these looks. So who had my drab of the week? Well, my drab of the week this week for the performance attire has to go to oh. Magami. She just wasn't giving what everybody else was giving and it just wasn't good enough. And what about for the runway? Well, my drab of the week for the runway has to go to 
Maya Iman LePage. All in all, it just wasn't a look. It was just pieces that came together and didn't even have a concept. It was just very middle of the road, honestly. Like, you could say what you want about Amanda, but at least she thought about it and at least she, she tried. I don't feel like Maya even tried. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positives. So who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week for the performance attire, I am gonna have to give it to Plasma. I'm giving it to Plasma because she surprised me. This is a different silhouette for her. She looks so young, she looks so youthful, and I didn't even know she had this in her. I will say that I was struggling a little bit because I could have given it to Miss Maya Iman LePage because I was loving all of that. But ultimately, I decided to go with Plasma because I just liked it better, to be honest. But that was enough about the performance attire. Who had my fab of the week for the runway? Uh, this one was a hard one. I feel like a few of them really turned it up, but I'm ultimately gonna go with... Win. I love it. First of all, it looked elegant, it looked expensive, but not only that, she took the idea of pussycat wig and really turned it into a moment. It was all about the wig, giving you three wig reveals. That's the smart part. Everybody else did outfits that were cute and made sense, but some of them took a step too far while Nymphia Wynn really made it all about the wig while looking freaking fierce at the same time. So congratulations, Miss Nymphia Wind. And that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my comments or my fab or drabs of the week? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series, and I'm hopefully gonna get close. So please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That is it for this episode. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social channels, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.